All right guys, so I wanna start this video off by just jumping right in and getting right to the subject matter. A lot of us as video creators or content creators have our main workhorse camera. And for me, that has always been the Sony a7 III. For a lot of you guys that are watching this right now, you guys also might be in the same boat that the Sony mirrorless system, either the a7 II, a7S II, a7S III, a7S IV, a770 million. I don't know how many different versions there are now. I don't really pay attention too much. Now, for me personally, I bought the a7 III in, I believe, early 2019. I bought it in January 1st after it became like the camera of the year for 2018. I knew it was the camera I had to buy. And honestly, ever since I have been using this camera, this has been the main workhorse. Literally anything I would do would be captured with this. This guy has traveled to the States as well, to like Atlanta, even across my province, uh, all the way outside to Quebec and stuff like that in Canada. And just all around, generally, this has probably about a million or so views or more, I'm not even sure. Um, you know, in terms of the content I created for other people. Honestly speaking, this camera still works really well to this day. Amazingly enough, I'm always seeing on YouTube uploaded all the time our new cinematic videos using the a7 III. All you need is a really good lens, a good story to tell, and of course, you know, maybe some decent lighting uh, to go along with that. All right, so pretty much the first day I got this camera, I dialed in the settings to exactly what suited me. And I actually ended up following a creator called Lee Zavitt, and he just had like these settings dialed in how I liked it too. Like the same function buttons, uh, you know, how the scroll wheels work and just everything about the camera that he had set up. I followed the tutorial and I really liked how it worked. And you know, I, of course I tweaked a couple things for my own liking, but pretty much I followed his tutorial. Now if I can find that video, I will leave a link or like an icon so you can go watch it yourself if you are interested in this camera and how I have mine set up. So pretty much when I got this camera, the very next day, and I, I kid you not, <laughs> we shot a full fledged music video and we filmed uh, in a small little like Airbnb studio type vibe uh, for an artist named Romeo Wilson. We shot like a really quick three hour, four hour R&B music video. And honestly, it came out pretty good. The reason why it's interesting is because I just bought this camera and I'm going already and shooting a music video with it with pretty much barely any experience in terms of music videos to that level where we're using higher end equipment. I wasn't too prepared though in terms of battery. Again, I just bought the camera. So we were only running off of one battery, mind you, for the one day that we shot. And honestly, that's one good thing about this camera is that it lasts a long time. I think the one battery might last about an hour and a half, two hours if you're like not constantly recording. The camera did end up dying, I think at the very end of the shoot. So we were pretty lucky. And the last couple shots were just on the A6300 or whatever camera we had as backup. And that was pretty much the shoot. Now, again, this isn't like a technical review. So I'm going to just give you a practical review from someone who actually is in the field using it. I don't like... Um, you know, videos where they're showing you a graph and they're pointing at the screen to show how sharp it is in the corners and stuff. I think that's boring. It's not practical. It's not how you use cameras. This review is just my firsthand experience over the last like three years of just using that camera for almost everything. If you don't already think that's an interesting story, the next day we filmed another full fledged music video. Yes, yeah, so back to back days right after buying the a7 III, uh, we shot a video for Romy Wilson. And then we shot a video for Fame Holiday. We only had three hours to film this video or three and a half hours, give or take. The image quality uh, did not fail us. We had minimal lighting, not too much going on and everything worked out amazing. Pretty stressful to film back-to-back -back music videos like this. Now, I do wanna quickly talk about how I kind of use this camera. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I did not have a lot of money back in the day when I got this camera. This pretty much drained my bank account. So all the gear I was using was very, amateur beginner but still got the job done but i bought this sigma mc11 adapter which cost i think around 300 400 bucks when i first got it i bought that because i knew all my old glass would not be able to work on the sony camera it is an e-mount which is sony's native mount i only had the kit lens and i don't like kit lenses with my past experience using a Canon T6i, that kit lens was absolute garbage. Maybe in like outside perfect daylight situations, it'd be fine. But for the type of stuff I wanted to do, it would not be ideal. Of course, in the future, you know, I've upgraded to like Sigma lenses. So you can kind of see here, but this is the adapter here. Just kind of like screws on like a regular mount would. Just puts on and there we go. Now it's on. 
So yeah, it's a really cool adapter and I re honestly recommend this because this allows you to adapt Sigma and also Canon EF lenses. So it's really more versatile in terms of your lens options. I want to talk about a little bit more usability of this camera. So it is a pretty lightweight camera if you're not using big lenses like this. Of course, once you start attaching like a cage or you have a full rig where you, you know, it's a big system, a uh, bunch of accessories, it does tend to get heavy. Me personally, just doing music videos and stuff, I would always rig it up to make it heavier because the heavier a camera is, the more stable you can mostly get your shots. So I rock a lot of handheld movements in my videos and I need a heavy camera. Regardless though, this camera does have some stabilization in it. I usually turn it off. I am more so a fan of the natural look. So I turn off any digital eyes stabilization in the camera. This camera has really just come with me to almost every single shoot that I've ever done in the last like three years. Even now, I typically bring this camera as like a car mount. We use the Sony a7 III as a car mounted shot because it's a very stable camera, a small body, it's not too heavy. We can do a lot of different mounting options with it. And it's pretty safe to say that like if this camera falls at this point and gets broken, I won't be too heartbroken. I'll be a little bit upset, but I won't be um, upset as it's not my main camera anymore. This camera again can be thrown at a gimbal, a car mount, handheld by itself with just the body, or you can rig it up to me small or large, whatever you need. And it's going to work phenomenally. Uh, I think the best thing, and I'm going to highlight this feature. The best thing about this camera is the low light. I am a director who loves to play with light and I want to make it very dark. All my visuals have like an element of shadow and it's very contrasted work. With the a7 III or really any a7 body, you can pretty much crank that ISO and get amazing looking results with just the camera alone and barely any lights around you. So some of my favorite content that I've ever shot with the Sony uh, a7 III has been Fame Holiday No Way, the music video, uh, Romeo Wilson Don't Like Talking music video. There was like this short film slash like uh, music video that we shot. It was called uh, Gary B, I'm With You. I wasn't too satisfied with the entire music video, but some of the shots that we got look really, really good. And they look cinema-esque. We actually use the Sony A7S II and A7 III together. I love some of these images, just like amazing how, you know, some of it came out. I primarily shoot with HLG format, uh, either HLG 2 or 3, I forget, but I'll put it up on screen. I believe it's PP10, picture profile 10. I like the HLG look. It kind of gives you enough saturation and contrast already. And that way in grading, it doesn't take too much to kind of get it back to a nice look. So basically before I talk about the cons of this camera is this little dial up here. There is one knob with uh, numbers one and two on it. Those are presets that pretty much hold your camera's memory. I think it's called memory recall or camera recall, something like that. And you know, of course, when you go to one, it's set to, for me anyways, 24 frames per second, 100 megabits per second. And I switch it to number two, just by you know a little switch like that, number two. Now I'm on 60 frames or 120 frames, depending on what the project is. I don't know how many times I've been on set where we're doing like an event recap and I'm one man banding everything. I'm just taking pictures, I'm doing video. Even with that, it's easy because right beside the one and the two, there's the manual and that's just photography. This is still a high quality camera and you can get away with using this right now and no one's really going to know what camera it is if you know what you're doing with your lenses, lighting, exposure, all that stuff. When I first got it, it was probably $3,000 and uh, now you can probably find it for like $2,000, maybe a little bit less depending on the shape of it. Okay, my first complaint is the uh, 8 bit recording or the color science behind this camera. Sometimes the colors were really off. But again, with the 8 bit recording, it only allows you to color so far. So the image begins to break. And I think that's a major flaw with this camera is that it's a beautiful image, but if you want to push it to a certain extent, you're going to have some issues uh, at, a, at a certain point. I only really have like small gripes with this camera. So like my last problem would really just be like overheating issue. Only come up two times ever in my career, but the two times it happened, I needed it to work. It was an event and uh, you know, when you're at an event, you can't really redo things. These are not music videos where you can make alternate takes. The whole camera basically shuts down. The back of the screen tells you that there's an overheating issue, cool down whatever it's nonsense and honestly for a camera this expensive and for how we're shooting with the recording it shouldn't even overheat but i was in like a pretty air-conditioned room and i was just filming with like two sd cards in my camera which i think is the problem probably a me problem but 
the overheating issue is definitely a big thing for me and it might be for you too so watch out for that all right guys that's pretty much the video if you enjoyed today please leave a thumbs up comment down below what you think and of course subscribe please do not miss my uploads there's a notification bell as well if you want to press that you'll get notified every time i upload and it really helps me out because uh you know you guys will see my content all right guys that's pretty much it for me see you in the next video